Hello everyone and welcome back to the Dork Side. I'm the Dork in the Road and this is six unwritten rules of camping, motorcycle or otherwise. I'm the Dork in the Road and I want to be your internet riding buddy and camping buddy, so please consider subscribing. I've been camping pretty much my whole life with tons of different people, lots of different places and scenarios, big groups, small groups, by myself, whatever, and through that time I've discovered what I'm sure many of you fellow campers have discovered. There are just some sort of universal rules that everyone seems to know about, but they aren't like written down or, or talked about, they just sort of are out there. It's just sort of part of the experience and so... I thought it would be fun to make a video where we talk about them. And maybe I'll help some of you new campers be prepared to walk the walk, as it were, and also you experienced campers be like, oh yeah, that totally happens. So these are six universal, unwritten rules of camping. Rule number one, food, drinks, and snacks are to be shared. It never fails. If you have a bag of gummy worms, someone will ask for a handful. If you have a six pack of beer, someone's gonna wanna try it. If you're making hot dogs or sausages for dinner, inevitably, if you have an extra, somebody else will ask for it. Or, really, what you should be doing is planning to share those things with other people. Camping is a communal group experience. You share gear, you share a fire, and with that comes sharing the food and drinks and snacks that you bring. So most camping trips I've been on, everyone's sort of like, hey, I've got these granola bars. Does anyone want one? Everyone kind of shares collectively. So bring extra, be prepared to share your food, drinks, and snacks with the people that you're camping with, and know that if someone is camping with you and they have a snack or a drink that looks intriguing, it's probably okay to ask if they're interested in sharing because for the most part, when you go camping, that's kind of the way people operate, in my experience. I'm not saying necessarily with people, brand new people you've never camped before, but if it's a group of people you're pretty familiar with, chances are they'll be willing to share some of their potato chips with you if you just ask. So uh, that's rule number one, food, drinks, and snacks are generally shareable and to be shared to bring enough to share with everybody. It's a little bit like in school, did you bring enough snacks for the whole class? Make sure that you did. Rule number two kind of goes along with that. Rule number two is you can't have too much ice, too much water, or too much booze when you're camping. It's impossible. Extra ice is always welcomed. Every other trip I forget ice or I don't have enough ice or I have just enough ice to keep my drinks cool but not enough ice to put in my drinks, things like that. So if you've ever got extra room in a cooler and you can take an extra bag of ice with you and you're camping with a bunch of other people, if you show up with that ice, there's a 90% chance that you're going to be a hero. That's good. Speaking of ice, it's good to have ice in the bottom of your cooler, but I also like to keep a separate bag. This is more when I'm car camping, less when I'm motorcycle camping, to take out and put into drinks or whatever, especially if you're mixing drinks. That's good to have. Booze is great on its own, even better when it's shared with other people. So one of the cool things about camping with a group of people is you get to try different beers or different whiskeys, different boozes. It's nice to be able to share a little bit out of your bottle or one beer from your six pack. I always recommend bringing more than you think you'll need or then you'll drink, knowing that you'll probably trade a little bit back and forth and, and people will try out different people's things. I was just on a trip with Duck Fan and McLovin. Duck Fan brought a growler and very graciously let me try a glass of it. It was delicious. So I like to bring extra booze for that reason because there's always somebody to share with. Just be careful if you're not sharing that you don't end up drinking all your extra booze because that leads to the need for the third thing, which is extra water. So you can't have too much water. You need water for a lot of things when you're camping and sometimes you bring it for cooking, but you don't realize you also need it for washing or doing dishes. It's really great to have water if you overindulge in said beverages the night before and need to hydrate up in the morning, particularly if you need to be functional on a multi-day trip. That headache, that hangover is not a good way to operate out in the woods especially if you have to throw a helmet on and ride the next day, so I always bring extra water for that. If worse comes to worse, you get to the end of your trip and you still have water left in whatever you brought your water in, it can always get dumped on the campfire to make sure it's extra out before you leave. So you can't have too much water, it's not possible. Rule number three is about the campfire. And the rule is simple. Whomever makes the fire tends the fire. And I think this rule kind of works in two ways because some people get really, really, um, particular about a fire, if they built it, if they're the one that started it, they want to be the one to tend it. You run into enough of those people in your life and you start to just sort of leave the fire alone if you didn't make it. It tends to be that one person starts the fire and they end up tending it all night. Unless that person walks away or has to leave or whatever and then somebody else will take over, but I haven't been in many situations where the fire was kind of communally tended. Everyone just kind of hangs back and lets the one person tend it. There's an addendum to this rule, which I like to call Rule 3A, and that is 
If you camp with the same group of people a lot and you get the reputation as fire guy or fire person, nobody else will think about bringing fire things at all. They're all just going to assume without speaking to you that you're going to have what you need to light the fire and you're going to bring the firewood. A couple people I camp with in particular who never even think about bringing firewood because they just know I'll have it. I've just fallen into fire guy role apparently. Rule number three, whomever makes the fire tends the fire and sub rule 3A is if you get a reputation as a person who makes the fire, be prepared to be the fire person for the rest of your life. Speaking of the fire, rule number four is first person up in the morning makes the fire. Everyone just waits in their tent and it's like a game of chicken to see who gets out of their tent first, starts a fire so everyone else can get out and not be cold. And it's an interesting competition between your bladder driving you out of the tent because you have to pee in the morning and it being cold so you don't want to get out. Some people you camp with will never get out until the fire's done. They would stay in that tent until two o'clock in the afternoon so that they don't have to get up and make the fire or so they don't have to get up and be cold. But in general, the first person who gets up should be the person that makes the fire. And then only one person has to suffer. First person up in the morning makes the morning fire, assuming you're gonna have one. You don't always have a morning fire. Sometimes you just get up and go, but man, is it nice. Rule number five, also about the fire, is about smoke. The smoke will always pick one person and follow them for the entire night, sometimes the entire trip. This last trip with McLovin and Duck Fan, it was me. I sat on three different sides of the fire trying to get out of it, and it found me every time, and the other two didn't move one time. It never chased them. I know conventional wisdom, the old saying is that smoke follows beauty, but obviously, uh, in my case, that's not the case. I've found it's more that the smoke tends to just follow one person, and that person's just screwed and is gonna be dodging it for the whole night or the whole trip. If it's you, have fun washing all your clothes, coming home smelling like a chimney. Smoke will pick one person and follow them. That's rule number five. And number six, the sixth unwritten rule of camping is if someone who stands up to pee, gets up, walks away from the fire, and is standing silently facing in the other direction, don't ask them what they're doing. Don't investigate. Don't question. Avert your eyes and pretend you don't see them because... That person is probably urinating. And as the group gets more familiar with one another, the booze is flowing a little more and or the darker it gets, that circle, the distance that people go out to stand up and pee becomes smaller and smaller and smaller. And the next thing you know, it's dark and they're just outside the firelight behind you. So if someone stands up and walks away and doesn't say anything, just ignore it. Just keep focused on the conversation and the fire. They'll do their business, they'll come back. Otherwise, you might catch a glimpse of something you don't wanna see. That peace circle is one of the most consistent parts of camping, so just be aware, avert your eyes, and you'll have a better time. So that's it, that's six quick unwritten rules of camping that I've sort of discovered in my years as a camper. What have I missed? What are the unwritten rules of camping that you're aware of? Leave those in the comments below. If you wanna check out a recent camping adventure, I'll put a link to the video right here. You can check it out. That was a fun trip. If you're interested in more information about my motorcycle camping gear and my setup, here's a link to a video where I walk through my gear and pack it all on the bike and show you how all that works. Thanks for coming along. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, don't forget to like it. Maybe subscribe if you haven't. But for now and as always, I just want to say thank you very much for watching. And please do not forget to be excellent to each other. I thank you. Excellent!